let us consider a smooth surface that is uh, enclosed by, by a boundary curve and the boundary curve is uh, simple, closed and smooth as well and in addition this is an oriented surface and giving the boundary curve a compatible orientation for example uh, right here you know the outward outward normal is the positive gives us positive orientation here and along the curve if we walk in counterclockwise direction as viewed from above then the surface stays to the left of us and you know that that's what the orientation is for our situations so what the stokes theorem tells us is this that uh, if we have a vector function f which has continuous partial derivatives uh, in an open region containing this surface then the line integral of uh, the vector function will be the same as the flux of the vector function across the surface s or the surface integral across the surface s with this orientation n and counterclockwise orientation of the curve as viewed from above. So let's just go ahead with the details of uh, mathematical calculations uh, in a particular example. So now let us use the Stokes theorem to compute this uh, line integral, okay, that is uh, this one, okay, where the vector function is uh, given by this definition and C is the intersection of the hyperboloid, you know, this is a hyperboloid as you can see it in here or it's branching out here with uh, this uh, cylinder uh, whose graph is uh, visible right here okay and the intersection of the two surfaces is this curve uh, let me show you in the original graph so here is your hyperboloid just give me a moment I'll quickly change the uh, change the color of one of the surfaces so one moment yeah sorry I should do it off the recording but that's okay so this gray one is the cylinder the red one is the hyperboloid okay as you can see all right and uh, then their intersection is this blue curve okay and that curve C is our boundary curve along which we are computing the line integral okay so our s is the surface of the this hyperboloid okay Interse uh, th that is uh, inside this cylinder x square plus y square equals one so now we shall apply the stokes theorem that is this line integral will be the same as the surface integral of the curl over the surface s and s is given by this paraboloid okay and remember this what we did was that uh, uh, our computational method is this that is uh, we would compute this curl and the dot product with uh, dr and uh, let me if we'd first do one more thing okay that is uh, see this is the this is an equation of the surface so let's go ahead and parameterize the surface because that's one of the ways of doing it and that's how we learned in the previous example so what we will have is that here our parameterization is going to be pretty straightforward that is we are just going to take x y as our parameters and this uh, y square minus x square that becomes the z coordinates so what we have here is that uh, we have the the surface as function of these two parameters x and y and uh, now what we will have is that we shall just write uh, this 
take the cross product and I have made a big typo okay I don't know why I'm in such a hurry so let me see I have to we will multiply that with or take the dot product with the cross product of these two vectors okay and D as I said is the parameter domain and uh, what what the parameter domain would be in this case uh, that will simply be this unit disk in this xy plane or or the region in the xy plane enclosed by this unit circle circle with uh, the origin as the center and radius equal to one so now that we have gotten the idea or an idea of the whole thing uh, I remove the cylinder and uh, so we are integrating over this surface this uh, red surface surface of the hyperboloid enclosed by this blue curve and its projection in the xy plane is going to be or the uh, domain of x and y would be uh, this circular disk oh, I forgot coloring the interior but that's okay all right so this this boundary would be the domain that the region within this boundary this black boundary will be D all right so now let's go to the computational part first thing we will calculate is the curl of F okay so curl of F is uh, going uh, to be uh, to be here one moment please so let me just bring our vector down here because that part is scrolling up okay all right so curl of f is going to be okay uh, let's compute it and remember this this is just symbolic for computational convenience and here we put the operators yeah keep in mind that these are not just uh, the quantity just any quantities these are operators and we will apply them to the left of the function you know in this particular case so we got uh, d over dz and then we shall just write the components here and who are the components of f we are computing the curl of f the components are uh, we got x square y one third x cube okay oh sorry this is the second component so goes here all right this is an example from your textbook the textbook by Stuart okay so then this would be this would be first we have d dy of uh, x y which will simply be x and then we would have uh, what uh, d d z of uh, one third x cubed which would be zero right so we have only x uh, now for uh, this uh, for the second component we are looking at a co at the cofactor of j so d d z of x square y would be zero and then we will have minus d d d x of x y which will be simply negative y and then after that look at the cofactor of k so here we have the derivative of one third x cube would simply be x square because threes will cancel x cube the derivative is 3x square and divide by 3 it's x square and then minus when you do take the derivative of x square y with respect to y that will be simply x square so the curl of f comes out uh, to be what simply sorry it had gone out of the screen but anyways we it's back in here so that's the curl of f now we are going to compute this quantity d dr dx cross dr dy so let's bring uh, r back here sorry r is right here so let's bring it down here so that it will be slightly easier to work with okay and then we shall 
write this down so what this will be um, let me go slow otherwise uh, I will make mistakes okay so when I differentiate x I get uh, 1 then differentiating y with respect to x I'll get a 0 then differentiating negative x square I'll get 2x and then we take the cross product with uh, who with uh, dr dy right and uh, then for dr dy we have 0 here then uh, d dy of y is sorry 1 okay and then d dy of y square minus uh, x square is 2x and uh, then we do this compute this cross product in the usual style so we have i j k okay and in the second row we have 1 0 negative 2x third row is 0 1 2y right okay and uh, then what we get as our cross product is that when you look at cofactor of i this is 0 and this would simply be 2x and then when we look at the cofactor of uh, j negative 2x times 0 is 0 so we will have negative 2y and then comma here we will have the cofactor of k is simply 1 right so now what did we want if you look at that we wanted this quantity so let's write this quantity here uh, rather first let's write this quantity okay and uh, where did my curl go it's right here that's what we computed as the curl so we get the curl then we take the excuse me dot product with the cross product of the partials of r so you get 2x square right and then these two negatives multiply into positive so we get 2y square and then we get a what simply 1 so what will happen now is that uh, our surface integral is uh, going to become it's going to become right here so this whole thing is simply 2x square plus y square okay and uh, then for the limits on the integration okay or limits as limits of the integrals let's go back to our uh, uh, our picture here so our domain is this d and the interior which is still forgot to color for you okay so anyways so so th that's the region inside this circle so we are converting now to polars and polars means that uh, we are going to take x equals uh, you know still i'm trying to write it and i don't know why is this not working for me one moment so we meant that uh, r equal sorry x equals r cosine theta right and uh, y equals r sine theta and by this time you know you have done many of such transformations so what the area element would be r dr d theta and in the case of that unit disk we are writing the limits of theta outside that is zero and uh, then here we have uh, two pi and for r r will range from zero to to what one and uh, this thing two x square plus two y square by Pythagorean what would this become this will simply become r square right and 
now you can just compute it in a routine manner in fact as a product of two integral you can compute it as so i'll just i'm just going to write the final value so how much is the value of that line integral that we had to compute we applied the stokes theorem and found that found that the value of the line integral that we wanted is uh, how much that simply or that is actually pi all right so let me know if you have any questions